A lot of Lutherans are wishing they could simply turn back the clock, to go back to a simpler time when the local church was the center of life in the community. But that's just not reality. Not only has culture diminished the value of going to church, but many have completely turned their backs on the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. The only resource to find meaning and hope in living, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lutherans in North America have been asking for a formal church body that is faithful to the Holy Bible in its preaching and practice, and faithful to the teachings of the Lutheran Confessions. We've heard you. Welcome to the North American Lutheran Church. I'm John Brudowski, Bishop of the North American Lutheran Church. We want to introduce you to what has become the fastest growing church body in North America. The NELC has embraced four core values which shape our common life. Christ-centered, mission-driven, traditionally grounded, and congregationally focused. And the place we always start is with the person of Jesus Christ. Our first core value is that we are Christ-centered. We believe the church is about Jesus, who is both our Lord and Savior. We believe that Jesus is the living word of God. He is the content of the gospel. We believe the Holy Scriptures are the written word of God and that the Bible shares the story of God's love for us in Jesus. We are called a confessing church, which comes from Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Here in the book of Concord are the historic confessions of the Lutheran Church. It's really quite a remarkable book. You ought to read it because we believe that the Lutheran confessions reliably guide us in faithfully interpreting the Word of God. I'm certain you already know the story of the good news of God's redemption for the entire world. But we also take seriously Jesus' great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. And so this brings us to our second core value, to be mission-driven. When most people hear the word mission, they think about this, global missions to feed the hungry, close the naked, and so on. But we in the North American Lutheran Church believe our primary mission is also much closer to home, taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the spiritually hungry people of North America. As more and more churches join us, we want to help them understand that we are not just church members, we are disciples, with a charge to go into the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, no matter where. So we have adapted the term mission-driven to indicate that everything we do is driven by Jesus' great commission to make disciples of all nations. One way we are doing that is by planting new congregations. But instead of throwing money at a region, we see our role as facilitating our congregations as they branch out locally and partner directly with mission posts, house churches, and mission fellowships. We are profoundly committed to global missions. Our call to preach the gospel includes billions of people who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But what the North American Lutheran Church desires is to encourage local congregations to partner directly with missionaries or mission organizations so they can know them, pray specifically for them, and help them with the needs they have. We are teaming with mission organizations like the World Mission Prayer League and East European Missions Network to help our congregations reach out globally. Yes, we are a new Lutheran church, and we're doing a lot of things differently. But at the heart of it all is that we are traditionally grounded, and that often raises questions like this from Jeff in Mesa. What is your take on the names for God? Well, Jeff, in the scriptures, God specifically reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're committed to using traditional language from the Bible to address God. Our traditional grounding goes even deeper than just this. On our website, thenalc.org, you'll see our focus on the Lutheran Confessions, the Ministry of Oversight, 
ecumenical relationships, and theology and doctrine. They're all focusing us on the path of Orthodox Christian belief. Here's Mary in Abington. What kind of worship resources do you intend to offer? Mary, we're working with Sola Publishing, the new publishing ministry for Confessing Congregations, which has already produced an abundance of Bible study guides and worship resources from a traditional perspective. Taylor in Tyler, Texas wants to know, how do we call a pastor? Well, that's part of my job as ministry coordinator. We're blessed with so many faithful pastors and seminarians coming into the NALC, so we can help connect call committees with candidates. Ultimately, your congregation will call your new pastor, but we'll be there to help every step of the way. Bess in Bessemer City wants to know, what about theological education? Well, it's true that we don't have a seminary yet, but we are committed to working with individuals to help them obtain a seminary education that's faithful to our commitment to scripture and the Lutheran confessions. Finally, Sally in Seattle asks, what about the traditional groups like Women's Guild and Youth? Sally, we've begun the nationwide Women of NALC organization. And for young people, we're working with Youth Encounter, a Lutheran organization that provides faithful events for youth. You'll probably have a lot more questions about our life together. So don't hesitate to contact us. Pastor David Wendell just said that we are doing lots of things differently. And one of them is the focus on congregations. Because we believe congregations are where the Holy Spirit does his best work in making disciples of Christ. So our national organization is intentionally lean. Here's our organizational chart. And here is our national office. To keep overhead low, some of us on staff work from our home offices. Local congregations work together through mission districts. Each mission district has elected a pastor to provide leadership for the district. These deans continue to serve as pastors of their own congregations. Because of our commitment to congregations, all NALC churches have an important part in major decisions. Teaching statements, constitutional amendments, and other major decisions must be ratified by NALC congregations before going into effect. We want each of our congregations to have a say in all major decisions. And probably the biggest question you might have has to do with money. How much do congregations have to give to the national church? The answer is simple. You decide. We want congregations to take responsibility for using most of their benevolence funds in their direct relationships with missionaries, mission congregations, and other worthy ministries in their communities. The NALC will suggest a range of support for its ministries, but that too will be a congregational decision. If I were to summarize our values, Christ-centered, mission-driven, traditionally grounded and congregationally focused in one word, it would be this word, discipleship. Every person I know wants their life to count, to have meaning and purpose. Jesus invites us, as he did those first followers, to an exciting and abundant life, a life that is truly worth living. What seems so strange is that he says the only way we will find that is by engaging in self-denial self-sacrifice, taking up the cross, and following Him. Another way I have framed that issue is to simply ask, for what cause are you willing to die? For what cause are you willing to give your life? Well, that may sound like a strange question. The truth is, when you have found a cause worth dying for, only then have you also found a cause worth living for. There is no greater cause than the cause of Christ and His kingdom. The pursuit of that cause is life-giving, empowering, redemptive. It is awesome and holy. This is the direction of the North American Lutheran Church. Authentic discipleship, 
faithfully following Jesus Christ today. And we invite you to join us in that journey. You know, it only takes a simple majority vote of your congregation, and you do not need to leave your current affiliation to join us. We would be glad to assist you in that process, so don't hesitate to contact us. We know that following Christ is not the easiest path, but nothing else in this life will provide you with greater meaning, purpose, or direction than a life of discipleship.